want to give a shout out to the GMs and the wives, the godly men, and the warm, inviting, feminine, empathetic women out there before I start this video. So I've been thinking recently on why people want to have more than what they want to work for. So a lot of the times in our day and age, in our society, men and women alike, whether it's in their career, whether it's in their relationships, or whether it's in their material things or whatever it is, almost always they want more than what they're willing to work for. And I think there's a few different reasons why this can be the case. And I'm going to try to lay it out here in this video. And for those that are just joining, my name is Thaddeus, and this is the Regal Change YouTube channel. So, if you're anything like me growing up, any kind of man out there like me, you had a tyrannical father, and you had a narcissistic mother. And this is not to degrade you know, the, the parents that we had, but it's to accept the reality as it is. It's to accept reality on reality's terms, okay? And that was just the case for me. And so I grew up, we, we weren't necessarily poor, but we weren't really well off either. And so a lot of the times what I see a lot of, a lot of different people nowadays, they understand loss, Right, because we've all we've all had our hearts broken in some way, shape, or form. We've all had some kind of form of loss of a loved one or something like that as well. But what very few people really understand is the struggle and then the overcoming of the struggle. They don't really understand the dichotomy and what it actually takes to get through the struggle. And a lot of the times, this is the reason why we stay with those kinds of friends of ours. We stay with our, our long-term friends that we know that, you know, meh, like, we're not really going anywhere. This is why people stay in relationships. It's because they're afraid of actually leaving the relationship to actually be alone. This is one thing that a lot of women nowadays can't really handle as well. And even though there's a bunch of lonely men out there, it's like the women, like women were actually single at one point. <laughs> like long ago, women were actually single. They weren't always talking to guys. And earlier on this channel, I put out a poll asking if guys want to be the man that the women monkey branch to. Now, for those that are unfamiliar with the term monkey branch, is basically where she's already got this guy over here and before she swings over here she wants to make sure that you're gonna be there when she's when she lets go of this branch this guy over here and the problem with this kind of mindset in my opinion and from what I see in all the relationships that actually don't last <laughs> it's like you can see what's going to work and what's not. So if a woman is doing that, she's holding on to this guy while seeing which branch she wants to go to next. The characteristics of this woman is going to be, she's going to be highly anxious, number one. She's going to be kind of spazzy. Whenever you communicate with her with your energy, it's going to feel like the, 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 the energy is everywhere. And that's because she's everywhere. <laughs> like she just is and that's going to be the way it, it goes so if you're not looking for a long-term relationship well that's the kind of woman you want you want a monkey brancher but if you are someone that is looking for an actual long-term relationship which on this channel is what I advise you to do that's not going to be it's not going to be the way to go it's not going to be the way to go and there was about 80 percent of the people that actually voted and even though it was a small pool, comparatively, there was like 50 or 60 votes when I saw. But out of those 50 or 60 votes, only just up for like a couple hours, 80% of the people 
that, that voted were the men that said, absolutely not. They do not want to be that guy. And there was a couple guys that were okay with it, but overall, that wasn't the case. So why is this important? Why, why, why is this needing to be talked about? Because if you are, if you are a man like myself as well, where you did have a tyrannical father and you did have a narcissistic mother, you're going to attract males and females that are like your parents throughout your whole life. And you're going to have certain kind of thought algorithms that are going to continue and play out that way until you overcome and you recognize those patterns and create new neural pathways by participating in different kinds of behaviors that actually allow for growth, not only psychologically, but physiologically and spiritually as well. So this is gonna be the whole package and it starts with the mind and the body and the soul. Of course, of course, those are all related, but it starts first with the mind. In order, in order to change the body in some way, you have to have, a, you have, to have the mind to do it. So you have to be conscious in some way, shape, or form or another. So you have to have the mind to change the body. But if you don't have the mind and the body connected, where you can have a great body, but your mind is not connected to your soul, and, and your body is not connected to your soul. So in a sense, the mind, body, and soul cannot live without one another. The mind needs the body and the soul. The body needs the mind and the soul, and then the soul needs the body and the mind in order to completely transform altogether. So the reason that I talk about this stuff is because I was very against authority growing up and like up until my healing process as well. I was very against authority. And so a lot of the men out here that did have a similar kind of parenthood or their father was just absent altogether, likely the only emotions that you're going to be able to understand is anger, frustration, and confusion. And it's because you weren't led properly. And if you had a mother that was absent or narcissistic or any of those kinds of things and you were trying to people please your way to success or whatever it is because that's how you were raised you were raised to be a people pleaser you were raised to be someone's stepping stool and even though it wasn't necessarily conscious that's what you were like you were a stepping stone again you're gonna feel you're not going to feel connected in your relationships. You're not going to feel connected to yourself. And this is where the core of the issue, I think, really lies. This is where we get to the meat and potatoes, okay? Self-reflection and being able to identify yourself within yourself is a tool and a, and a capability that I would say majority of the people nowadays do not have. They lack this ability and they consistently violate their own inner feelings and their own inner turmoil for the sake of trying to make things pleasing to other people. And it's a lot of the times it's because of a, a fear of conflict. There's an avoidance of conflict sometimes as well. And if you are someone that avoids conflict, you got to think about your relationships to your family and okay. So, and, and specifically your mom and dad, because that's going to be the closest relationships that you have in this life. Th those are the people that you were literally bred from. So your, all of your habits, all of your, we've talked about epigenetics on this channel as well. Epigenetics are basically, the biological environment that is constructed in your DNA and in your genes to ensure that your dream, your genes, certain genes are going to be passed down to you given the environment that was before you. So the lives of your mom, your dad, 
your grandparents on both sides, their, their parents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's going to play a huge part in how you live your life. And so it's up to you to become fully attuned with yourself and who you are. You have to know who you are and what you want and what you desire and not place a umbrella of what a man or a woman is like on the whole population. And that's one of my biggest critiques on this channel is how sometimes I put, like, because I can be so generalized when I talk about men or when I talk about women, and it's like, well, that is the majority of men and women today. Is it not? Like, look around. So when I speak in generalities, I'm speaking in regards to the majority. I'm not saying that it's all women or all men. It's, it's so annoying to have to, like... <laughs> So annoying to have to talk like that sometimes. Don't need to. But ultimately, what you're going to have to choose is what do you want to work for? It's astounding to me to hear some of the people that are just around in my community or even the people that I've talked to on in my consultations and to hear what they want out of life and then when the rubber hits the road, it's like they don't have the passion or the desire to actually do that thing. And I understand that. I understand that. But that comes back to struggle. That comes back to being willing to struggle. If you're not willing to struggle, if you're not willing to make the sacrifices, then me or nobody else can help you. When I was going to college... I was, for two years, I was pretty much eating ramen noodles, eggs, pizza, and ice cream because that's what I could afford and that was what I could get the most amount of food for the cheapest price. And I was working full time. I was going to school full time. In fact, more than full time. I was going, I was taking like 15 to 18 credits in a semester. And so for two years, I was hardcore going, going for it. And so... There was just, there was no time for me. There was no time. And it was a struggle, man. Like, it was a struggle. I didn't want to do what I was doing. And by the time I got to the end, quote unquote, the end of graduation of college, by the time I got to the end, I was just, I was left thinking as I was holding that certificate, I just thought to myself, was it really worth it? Like, like, was it really worth it? I don't know yet. Like, only time will tell. But that was one of the first things that I thought of. And I'm not saying that you should quit college or anything like that. I'm not going to encourage you to go to college or university anymore because, to be honest, the school system is corrupt. And it's not even a place of actual intellectual honesty anymore. You know, Aristotle said that it's, it, it's a sign of an intellectual mind that if he can entertain an idea without accepting it. And I can entertain ideas without accepting them. And I know a lot of people that can do that as well. But in the universities, majority of the people cannot do that. It is a breeding ground for pathology, as far as I'm concerned. That's not to say that um, you, you can't go to college or you shouldn't go to college. It's just be mindful and understand that if you're gonna go to college, Likely, the only thing that you're really going to college for is to get that piece of paper. That's really all you're doing. And that sucks to say and that sucks to hear for some of you maybe, but that's the truth. Otherwise, I would recommend just going to a trade school or just starting a business. I wish I had just started a business. When I was 18, I wish I just started a business. Like, I could have been, I was, I was serving at the time as well. I was doing, I was, I was being a server and you know, it wasn't a lot of money, but I was getting cash like every every night I worked. And, you know, some nights there there was two nights I remember over the summer where I walked home with like 300 bucks. That was crazy in one night. Like that was the 4th of July. It was the 4th of July and I walked home with $300 in my pocket that night. And I was just like, holy crap. But, you know, it was rough work. Like, I have so much respect for the blue collared workers and all of the food food service workers 
anybody that's in retail, honestly, just any job in general, if you're just doing a good job and you're actually working for, and you're just tr striving to be the best version of yourself and that position, in that position rather, I'm going to stand up for you. Like, I don't care. Achievements really don't matter to me. And the, it's not necessarily about like the achievement that makes me who I am, right? Because of who I am, that's what makes the achievement. And that's something I've mentioned to a diff couple different people on consultations recently. And I want to make that clear to you guys that are still watching this video now. It's like achievements really don't mean much it's it's about who you're becoming and who you are while you're participating in the things that you're doing and so a lot of the times again the reason that a lot of people are not willing to actually work for the things that they want even though they want more than what they were willing to work for it's like the reason that that is is because they didn't have proper guidance they didn't have they didn't know things like and you don't know what you don't know so it's like you just have to kind of figure things out as you go along and thank god for youtube <laughs> like seriously i would not be who i am without youtube and all, all the people that i watched in the past on youtube and like i wouldn't have certain kinds of understandings of life and I wouldn't be able to, in a way, vicariously understand certain things about life if it weren't for those people. And so this is something that hopefully videos like this is going to be able to, to transcribe and to transmute over into your life to where you don't have to have this, you don't have to be so restless about people or things or career or whatever like your spirituality whatever it is that you're going through right now hopefully you don't have to think about things in a way without guidance because if you don't have guidance if you don't have god it's going to be very challenging for you to operate in a way that makes you really feel fulfilled at the end of the day and i'm not saying that like because I know that there's quote-unquote successful men or successful women out there that they do have families or they do have a great career, whatever the case is, and they they're living fine and they you know but they're not they're not godly, and it's like well that's fine like if they're not going to hurt anybody then there's no need for that but in all honesty. I really don't think you can be fully fulfilled without God. And this is another reason why growing in your relationship with Christ is going to help you understand what you actually want and what you're actually willing to work for. Because God will humble you, man. <laughs> God will humble you. He will. Believe me when I say that. And in the end, you'll be able to have the last laugh because you know that God's on your side with all these people out there that maybe don't believe in you or maybe don't believe in your vision, whatever the case is. If you're going to just go out there and put in the work and you're going to actually start making a difference in your own life, there's nothing that you can't do. And I'm living proof of that. <laughs> I don't ever want to be broke again. That was horrible. <laughs> that was so horrible. And I have so much respect for things and food and just like clean, clean, like nutrition in general. I have so much respect for it nowadays and I have so much more appreciation for it that I know I'll never take it for granted. And like, I'm just, I'm just so grateful for running water, for a shower that actually works, that I can actually get like warm water out of every now and again because I take a lot of cold showers. But it's like these little things, you don't realize the value of them until they're actually gone. And so that's another thing about our society and people in general. They're so used to living in comfort that they don't even realize that they're living in comfort. Like their problems that they're having, like 
social skills or whatever. It's like, you, like here you are worried about how, how you're going to talk to people. Meanwhile, in other parts of the world, people are wondering how they're going to get their next meal. It's like, let's, let's have some perspective, okay? Like, let's have a little bit of perspective. Let's be a little bit more grateful, and hopefully we'll create a better life for ourselves overall and that's more fulfilled. And with that being said, I hope this message was useful and insightful. And until next time, peace be with you.